What do you get? Traffic jam. The traffic jam? Mm -hmm. Welcome to Sutter and Street. Order whenever you're ready. Yeah, can I get a 24 ounce traffic jam? A 24 ounce traffic jam? So we are actually all out of our power rate right now. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Dang, anything else you want? I don't know what else to get. That was like the healthy yeah, that was like the, option. Yeah, I know. Here's my little Caesar. Um, can we get a 32 ounce nitro with regular Mountain Dew? A 32 nitro with regular Mountain Dew? Yep. Okay, anything else? Um, yeah, just a moment. Um, then can we do a 24 ounce red line with Minute Maid? 24 ounce red line with the lemonade? Yes. That's rough, dude. Oh, I, there are a few things that are worse than going to a spot, expecting, craving something, and then them tell you they don't have it. Oh no. That Brutal. Hurts. I don't know. All I know is that this drink is extremely unhealthy, but it is so delicious. You got your Mountain Dew in there, and they put a mango puree in with it and then half and half like it's clogging all your arteries it's for sure giving you some form of cancer but it is so good all right folks welcome to uh the cutter laboratory this is my canvas cutter summit bedroll this is how I have it set up. Um, it's got my air pad. It's got a down mountain hardware down bag in it. And my air pad has a built in air pillow. So I don't need that. It's got my pole system in it as well. I thought I would show you um, my summit and how I have it set up and how I use it. I'll show you how I have a scale here on the table. Um, I can show you how much it weighs. This is with the pole system in it. If it will hold still. So I'm right at I'm right at six pounds. I don't know if you can get that landing, but it's straight up at six pounds. So if you were to take the pole system out of it, that would save you five nine now. That would save you about a pound. So I'd be closer to just at five. I think without the pole system, I am. I'm at like 5.1 pounds um, set up. So that's how much it weighs. Let me set the scale down and I'll undo it and show you what I have inside of it and kind of how I set it up. So I have this too. I take this with me. This is a flex, flex tail gear, tiny pump. We have no relation, no partnership or anything with it. It's actually, it's, it's a pump that you can use to pump up your air pad, your air pillows, and it will blow your air pad up in less than a minute. And it also, you can reverse the nozzle on it. So it would suck all the air out and it's a sweet little pump it's rechargeable it only takes a few minutes to charge you could charge it off of a battery bank and it works awesome so i'll show you that too i don't know if i'll blow my air air mattress up with it just because it's loud and that would be but you can see like it puts out blow it on the microphone it puts out a lot of a lot of air and rechargeable, comes with many different nozzles. I've used it on multiple air pads. It works awesome. Unless you like getting super lightheaded and having you know that almost about ready to pass out experience, which maybe some people do, you know, after hiking several miles and you get in there and you want that. It's kind of like a little buzz that some people might enjoy. So <clears throat> my summit is, Set up like so. Open this mesh up so you can see it. So I've got, like I said, it's actually a 20, 30 degree mountain hardware bag. It's older, it's down, it has almost no loft in it anymore, but I am a hot sleeper and it works really good for me. I'll use that or a climate blanket but it's a, it's a blanket they use. I have a Zoo Believe air pad in it. 
So I just looked up like top rated ultralight backpacking air pads and Zoo Believe was one on, uh, of them. And on Amazon, they're like $26, $27. And it's got the built-in pillow. It's not insulated, but I've never felt like insulation in an air pad has done that much for me versus ones that aren't insulated. But then again, I try to not sleep on them as much as possible. So the only time is when I'm backpacking and using the Summit that I sleep on one. And most the time I'm doing that, it's decent weather. Now, the last time I used it, it was legitimately below freezing. It was very cold last weekend when we, we killed Jason's elk. We were all using summits and the mesh, expecting it to be really good weather and warm because it was everywhere except where we decided to camp. It was like this slow spot that possibly has a spring right there. But it was really cold, but I actually wasn't any colder on the Zoo Believe air pad than I was on any air pad that, that I've slept on before. Um, I like it because it has a built-in pillow, so I don't need to bring one of those. And it's only a p one pound. So at one pound, I save weight by not having an extra pillow, which is usually around a pound, and an air pad that's usually around a pound or two. I'm saving a lot of weight with this air pad, and it's as uncomfortable or as comfortable as any air pad I've slept on. So that's kind of what I use. I have, you put your pull, pull pad in just like you would on any bedroll underneath your air pad. Usually, it's a good idea to set your pole system up outside of the summit, just because I've noticed, and it's probably happened once or twice to me. I, it doesn't, I, I'm, I pay a lot of attention to it, but sometimes I notice guys will put their pole system in and they won't pay attention to how far the end is in the grommet and then they'll go to bend the pole system and the pole will pop out of the grommet because they actually didn't get it inside of it. So if you're concerned about that, it might be a good idea to pull the pole pad out and set up your poles outside of the summit and then just slide it back in underneath your air pad. But I usually start by putting my two sides in, like so, you can put that one in. Just make sure they're, they're all the way in the grommet and you don't have to that might be more frustrating for some people it's just how I do it and then you can you can tell when they're in there sometimes when you put the second one in they'll snap but set up the pull system like that and how I've been sleeping too I thought I would tell you this unless it's really cruddy weather you don't need the nylon top on it and so I've actually try to show you how I've been sleeping. It's awkward trying to go around this pole system and a table. It's up on a table. So when I've been out the past few weeks elk hunting, looking for deer, my summit has been like this. I'll have this side, the nylon zipped up around the top, just cause the wind was blowing from that side. And I had it just like that. So this whole side's open. It was great weather. It worked great. Um, it obviously with all the mesh is venting really good. And I had, I don't, can you see Landon? If, can you see me in that camera pulling this up? Okay, awesome. So we have tabs at the head and foot, these D loops that you can use paracord and tie them off if you want, either with or without the pole system. You can use the summit without a pole system. The nylon mesh has a D loop and there's a T joint on the bottom of the nylon, the top nylon shell that runs through that. So you can actually ditch the pole system and tie it off to trees or trekking poles. Um, the earlier in the season, I had the pole system and then I tied this off on a branch that was above me and it kept the whole thing off of me. It was super awesome. It, it helps it breathe more too with the nylon not laying right on you. 
on our last trip last weekend when we were elk hunting and it was really cold, the first night I didn't take a pole system. My wife was going to use the pole system in her summit. And I decided like, I don't need a pole system. It's gonna be nice weather. And I don't mind having the mesh screen just lie right over me. Um, and so that was my plan. It turned out it was a lot colder than we were expecting. And so the second night I tied this off to a fence post that was near us. And then we had these, these old um, lodge poles that were by our camp that we, we dropped from the fence post down over the top of us. And we tied the top and bottoms of our summits to it and it was stellar, it, it worked out great. I was expecting condensation because there was so much dew, it was really cold, I was super surprised. The first night, no condensation. The second night, I had a little bit of condensation on the ridge of my summit. My wife told me she had zero condensation in hers, which I thought we would have a ton with just the atmosphere, how damp and cold it was. And with us in there being warm and breathing, I thought we'd have a lot of condensation, but we didn't. So that was cool. But I'm gonna take this down and then I'll show you guys how I like to roll it up or how you should roll it up to keep this 40D nylon protected and use the 210D nylon at the bottom to really protect it as you're hiking in. That way you can keep it on the outside of your pack. You don't have to take up space on the inside of your pack to haul the summit. Just strap it to the top or bottom or side, whatever works best for your setup. But okay, I'll take this down and then I'll show you guys how I roll it up. All right, so this is my summit. Got it laid out on the ground. Um, one of the first things you need to do, um, and this is pretty much with all our bedrolls, because they have been waterproofed on the inside and they have all the seams are taped, the only thing that's letting air out um, at a rapid pace, like when you're rolling it up, is the zipper. Everything else will breathe slowly, right? through it. So it's important that you leave the zipper, at least one set of zippers, if not both, at the bottom and cracked a couple inches. So as you roll it up, all the air goes out. It's also important to understand too, with the air pad that you get, if you get an air pad that has a nozzle at the head, most air pads aren't different at the head from the foot unless they taper. If you have an air pad that tapers, you're going to want to make sure the nozzle's at the bottom because remember, you roll from the head to the foot. So um, we usually try to get as much air out of the air pad as possible before we roll it. But if your nozzle's on the bottom, as you roll your bedroll up, it's just gonna push all the air out the bottom. So leave the zipper cracked at the bottom and make sure the nozzle on your air pad is either at the bottom or comes that way. Next, you take it, I always fold the top over a little bit here, and then you fold the sides in. And this is the same on all of our bedrolls. You fold the sides in. On the summit, I try to go the width of the poles usually, um, maybe a little wider than that so it's not so thick. It's, it's a fine balance. Usually I have that 210D nylon. I'll have two to four inches of that showing on each side. So fold the sides over so that that bottom showing. That way when you roll it up, all that 40D nylon is inside the roll and it's not showing. So when you strap it to the outside of your backpack, you, can, uh, you don't have to worry about it tearing on brush because it's the 210 that's taking it. Always use your knee on all the bedrolls. It helps you. And as you roll down, see how the air just quickly escapes? If I didn't have that unzipped at the end, it would fill up like a balloon and then slowly deflate. But when it's un unzipped at the ends, it allows that air to escape. And you just pull it in. two to four inches each side. Use your knee as you roll. Let that air out. Then you have your buckles. Make 
sure they're not twisted. And then buckle that tight. And there you go, you got, oh, this, <laughs> this still has elk blood because it got packed out on top of a hind quarter. But um, there you go, you got your, your summit bedroll rolled up, ready to go on the next trip. It's got your sleeping bag, your air pad, pillow, poles, anything else that you want in an elk blood from an elk quarter. But that's kind of, that's my summit setup and that's how I roll. So I hope that was helpful for you and understanding kind of how the summit works and how you would use it and how to roll it up. But okay, cheers, cheers. All right, I hope that was helpful. That is my summit bedroll setup and kind of how I like to roll with it, if you know what I mean, <laughs> pun intended. I hope that answered some of your questions or gave you some ideas of how you could use your summit bedroll or if it's applicable for how you hunt. Don't forget that we do have a giveaway going on right now in conjunction with Sheep Feet. You can win yourself a canvas cutter burrow duffel and some Sheep Feet custom orthotics simply by following Sheep Feet on their Instagram page, making sure you're subscribed to the Canvas Cutter YouTube channel, and then go follow the CutterCast on whatever podcast platform you prefer to use. So if you do that, you get yourself entered to win. But until next time, bye.